the supreme question, what shall it profit a man if he gains the world and loses his soul? Only Jesus could answer that question. He alone knows the value of the earth because he and the Father created it on Genesis morning. He knows where every diamond is located and it's not on your hand. There is something else he knows that you do not know. He knows how long eternity is going to be without God. Your mind cannot grasp a million years. It cannot grasp 10 million years. But God can. It's called eternity. And it never, never, never ends. The Bible says your life is like grass that's cut down in the morning and wilts before the noonday sun. But when you wake up in eternity, you're going to live forever and forever and forever and forever and forever and forever. It will never end. Consider the value of your soul. The value of your soul caused God the Father to take his son to the edge of eternity and tell him the seed of the woman must be born to destroy the influence of Satan on the earth. The value of your soul forced him, Jesus, to allow Herod's men of war to spit on him, to slap his face, to place a purple robe on his back and mock him, to place a crown of thorns on his head and press it until it pierced the skull, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! The value of your soul drove him to Pilate's whipping post to be beaten bloody for your healing. Listen to the sound of that whip sizzling through the air. And every time it hits the back of the Son of God, snatching flesh and meat from the the body of Christ, the dripping of the blood of the Son of God on the cobblestones, by his stripes we are healed. Thank you, God, that every sickness and every disease is under the power of the healing of the great physician, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Put your hands together and give him highest praise in the house of God. The value of your soul compelled him to carry his blood-soaked cross up to the summit of Calvary to allow Roman soldiers to nail his hands and his feet, to lift his blood-soaked body in the air, the only throne he's known on earth. He sobbed, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It's the only time that Jesus ever called God the Father God. Every other time it was Father. Why? Because he had become sin for me and for you. And God could not look upon sin. So he was there alone. Jesus had a lost and found sermon series. It's in the Bible. It's the parables. There are four ways to be lost. Listen closely. He talked about the lost sheep, the lost coin, the lost boy, the prodigal, and the lost elder brother. Let me touch quickly on those. Consider the lost sheep. The sheep was not lost because the sheep plotted with cunning to avoid the leadership of the shepherd. Sheep are basically stupid. (laughs) The sheep was lost because of its careless meandering until it fell into a deep ditch. Its bleeding voice was a lunch bell for a lion or a wild wolf. Are you lost from God because of your careless meandering and your foolish choices? Choices have consequences. It may take five or ten years from to catch up to you, but they will catch up to you. Be sure your sin will find you out. If humans don't find you, God will shout it from the housetop himself. God's a tattletale. (laughs) Yeah, he'll rat you out for sure. When Jesus saw the people as sheep without a shepherd, he was moved with compassion. The Greek text there reads, his bowels were wrenched with emotion. It broke his heart. He saw them already wounded and dead from Satan's attack because a sheep without a shepherd is dead already. His instruction, there were 99 that were safe in the fold, but one was lost. 
Leave the 90 and 9 and go search for the one that's lost. Search in the night. Search in the storm. Search in the cold. Don't come back without that one lost sheep. The attitude of the average church member for the lost is pet me, pamper me, pacify me, forget about everything. Bless me, love me, pray for me, visit me, wine with me. But forget about the lost. Preacher, I haven't won a soul to Christ in years. I haven't witnessed for the loss in months. I haven't prayed a prayer or missed a meal of fasting for the salvation of the members of my own family. But I want you to forget the lost and dying sheep in the city, and I want you just to focus on me. Your responsibility is to go into all the world, and your world starts where you live and preach the gospel. You are an epistle being read of people. Can I hear an amen here? Wake up, church. The soul that sinneth shall surely die. Say that with me. The soul that sinneth shall surely die. That's the Bible. People without Christ go to an eternal hell. Eternity is a long, long time. There is no such thing as purgatory. There are no rich relatives to bail you out. The day you close your eyes in death, you're either going to heaven or you're going to hell. Jesus said to the thief on the cross, what? This day you're going to be with me in paradise. Paradise is heaven. Consider the lost coin. The coin was not lost because it had ceased to be silver. It still belonged to the master of the house, but it was lost because it was out of circulation. And being out of circulation, it had no service. And since it had no service, it was useless. Some of you are saved as far as heaven is concerned, but as far as the kingdom of God is concerned, you're right next to useless. You're out of circulation. You don't have a place of service. You attend church when it's convenient. If you don't go to God's house on earth, how is God going to take you to his house in heaven? If you're uncomfortable with people praising the Lord and clapping their hands, you're going to be one miserable wretch when you get to heaven. That's what we're going to do over there. <laughs> then there's the lost boy, the prodigal. It's obvious he's lost. He's left his father's home and went into the far country. He's wasted his life. He's wasted the fortune. He's ruined his father's good name. He got tired of his father's stuffy rules of righteousness. He jumped on his Honda, popped the front wheel, and zipped down Highway 10, going to Dallas to live like big bad J.R. Ewing. <laughs> he wanted to do his own thing. But the more he got what he wanted, the less he wanted what he got. He left home saying, give me. Now, let me show you the arrogance of that. The firstborn in a Jewish family got two-thirds of the inheritance, and no one got anything until the first boy got his. Why? Because it was his responsibility to train all of the other, all of the other children in the principles of righteousness and to financially assist them get started in a business or a marriage on an equal basis. See how much sense that makes? But here comes this punk. He stuck his hand out saying, give me. He came home a few months later saying, make me. Make me as one of your hired servants. He left home saying, daddy-o. He came home stinking like a pig and said, oh, daddy. He went for pleasure and for power. He came home penniless and putrid and saturated in shame. He left home a son, and he came back a slave. He was an open rebellion to the will of the Father. Are you? Are you? Are you? Obedience is better than sacrifice. Say that with me. Obedience is better than sacrifice. That's a Bible verse, by the way. That means God had rather for you to obey him than to give him $10,000. God doesn't need the money. 
He owned it before you got it. And when they put you in a box, he'll still own it. But he wants you to obey him because your obedience is validation that he's Lord of your life. You won't live one happy day until you surrender to the will of God the Father. From Adam and Eve until late last night, that is the law of the kingdom of God. Our Father which art in heaven, he has all power in heaven and in earth. He has all authority. And as long as you obey him, he will move heaven and earth for you. But when you rebel from him, he will take his hand of blessing away and life will become hell on earth. Notice the condition of the lost. The father said, this is my son who was dead. Do you have a son without Christ? In the Bible, he's dead. Do you have a daughter? You have a father? You have a mother without Christ? He or she in the Bible are considered the living dead. The Bible says, he that believeth on the son hath everlasting life. But he that believeth not is dead already. Black and white, verse for verse, word for word from the Bible. Are you without Christ in the eyes of God? You are dead already. You must be born again. You must be born again. You must be born again. It's not an option. The world is full of turmoil and uncertainty. Many live in fear of what the future might bring. Soon the trumpet will sound and those who are alive will be caught up and will meet the Lord. But what will happen before his return? There are signs everywhere that the rapture is near. Jerusalem is reunited with Israel and the nations on earth are preparing for war. Through your study of Bible prophecy, you can gain wisdom and prepare yourself for things to come. For your gift of any amount, we'll send you an autographed copy of Pastor Hagee's End of the Age book. For your generous gift of $175 or more, we will also include our Prophecy Bible and an End of the Age study guide. Stay in the Word and share the Gospel with your loved ones. The coming of Jesus Christ is imminent. What a day that will be. Receive these resources today. Call the number on your screen or go to jhm.org eternity. There are five Bible facts about your eternity that Jesus said you should know. This is recorded in Luke 16, verses 19 through 31. It's a real place. It is a place Jesus called hell. Jesus had twice as much to say about hell as he did heaven. You say, preacher, why are you preaching on that? This is the 21st century. I know hell's still there and you're still going. That's so I don't see you on the day of judgment said, you know, if you didn't inform me this, this place was here, I might not be going. If you refuse to confess him publicly, you have rejected him. Jesus revealed that hell was a place of torment. It was a place of memory. It was a place of separation. And it was the eternal everlasting home of the people who refused to accept him. You say, preacher, I don't believe in hell. It's still, still there, partner. It's still there and you're still going. What do you believe? What you believe has no bearing on reality. That's a high heel for some of you to carry, but just think about it. Poison kills whether you believe it or not. Frost freezes whether you believe it or not. Fire burns whether you believe it or not. The world is round, whether you believe it or not. Hell is a reality, whether you believe it or not. People say, well, preacher, who believes in hell other than you? Jesus Christ. He spoke about hell twice as much as he spoke about heaven in the scripture. Luke 16, 22, 23, the rich man died and was buried. And being in torment in hell, he lifted his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Listen to that. He went to a place of torment. He knew who he was. He knew where he was. He knew who they were because there are people who teach. When you die, you die like a dog. You don't have consciousness, not according to Jesus, and he's the only one I know that's been there. 
Paul did, 2 Thessalonians 1, 89, inflaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. And they do, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here's that word obedience again. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction. How long? Everlasting destruction. John the Revelator believed in hell, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Here's the Bible description of hell. It's called a place of outer darkness. It's called a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's called a place of torment. It's called a place of everlasting destruction. It's called a place without rest. It is called a place where the fire is not quenched and the worm dieth not. Why is that word worm in there? Because you can kill a worm with a match, the heat from a match, because its skin is so sensitive. But this is going to be a fire that torments and never permits you to die. The rich man died. The day is coming when you're going to die. There's one statistic you should master. One out of one dies. It doesn't matter how how rich you are, how intellectual you are, how powerful you are, how athletic you are, with your magnificent skinny body, (laughs) you wretched thing, you. You're going to die. If you die without Christ, here's what you're going to experience. You're going to open your eyes in a place with millions who are tormented day and night, year after year, for all eternity. It's a place of consciousness. The Bible says he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham and Lazarus in his bosom. The rich man knew where he was. He knew who he was. He knew how he was. He knew he was lost forever. He looked from a bottomless pit of eternal darkness into a city of eternal light. A waterless inferno. He saw the sparkling river of life flowing from beneath the throne of God. From a city whose inhabitants are murderers and rapists and child molesters to a city filled with happy, holy, laughing, loving, joyous people. Surrounded by angels and God the Father and Jesus the Son. He heard the screams of hell's tormented legions, and he heard the saints singing on the hills of glory. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art. He looked from a city where the wicked never rest, tormented day and night, to a land of perfect rest. He heard Satan laugh in his face, you fool. You fool, you sat in church every Sunday. You sang the songs. You even carried a Bible once in a while. But you never got around to obeying it. You never got around to accepting Christ. Welcome home. He was tormented day and night. Abraham said, son, remember. He asked that they send Lazarus to put one drop of water on his tongue. And Abraham said, no, people in hell ask for so little and they get nothing. Abraham said, son, remember that you in your lifetime had good things and Lazarus had nothing, but now he has everything and you have nothing. The murderer will remember his dying victim. The rapist will remember his screaming target. The liar will remember the lies of his toxic tongue. Hello, Congress. <laughs> the fearful and the unbelieving remember the times they heard the gospel of Jesus Christ preached and rejected it. If you leave the service without the Lord, you will walk the corridors of eternity. Remembering every word I have preached, you will have an eternity to remember. Think about that. If I had a handkerchief that was silk that would never wear out, and this Bible amounted to Mount Everest, thousands of feet of granite rock, and one time each year a sparrow could carry this silk handkerchief over this massive mountain, 
When this mountain had been leveled with the sands of the ages and had been worn out, the first second of eternity has not begun. The answer, what will you do with Jesus who is called the Christ? What will you do? And what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Can we bow our heads? Father God, we thank you today because you are in this room and there are precious people, your sheep, that are lost and looking for a shepherd. There are people who like the coin are out of circulation and really have no place of service in the kingdom of God. There are those who are lost like the elder brother. They go to church and keep the religious rules, but Christ is not the Lord of their life. There are some in this room and those watching by television that if they died in the next 60 seconds would not end up in heaven. This morning, let no one leave this room without being sure that they're going to spend eternity in heaven with God and the holy angels, their family rejoicing around the throne. You're in this room right now. You say, Pastor, if Jesus Christ came for me in the next 60 seconds, I would not be ready. There are things in my life about which I must repent and make right. I must honor the Lord with obedience because obedience is better than sacrifice. If that describes you, would you raise your hand right where you are? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Stand to your feet, congregation. Stand to your feet. As we sing this song, Pastor Matt, I want those of you who raised your hand to come. I'm going to have a prayer with you. Some of you right now are getting ready to step from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Please hear this. You're not joining the church. This absolutely has nothing to do with Cornerstone Church. It only has to do with your eternal salvation. And when you cross that line, the Bible says the angels in heaven will rejoice that you've made that decision because they know how long eternity is and our minds just can't get it. As they sing, I want you to come. I want to pray with you. This is going to be the best day for the rest of your life. Pastor Matt, sing. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Come on. Come on. Thank you. God bless 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 you. you. Come out of that balcony. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Here comes two more. Here comes two more. Here comes another. Give the Lord a shout of victory in the house of God. We're all going to pray a prayer together because I'm not silly enough to believe that they're all here. And I know some of you watching by television have never heard a sermon like this in all of your life in the church you go to. But I assure you, everything I've said today is the yea and amen of the Word of God. And you want to know the Lord, extend your hand toward the television and let's pray together. Congregation, let's join them around the world as we pray together. Heavenly Father, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I ask you to forgive me of all of my sin, my failures, 
my shortcomings today in the authority of Jesus' name and by the shed blood of the cross, I ask you to forgive me, to cleanse me, to make me righteous, to make me pure, to make me holy. Lord Jesus Christ, from this day forward, I'm going to serve you and serve you only. You will be the Lord of my life and I will be your servant. I will read your word and I will obey your word. In Jesus' name, from this moment forward, Jesus is Lord. Amen. Give the Lord a shout of praise in the house of God. Amen. We're thankful that you've joined us to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are living in the end times. Together, we're changing the world with God's word. We want to share a very special thank you to our ministry partners, those who have supported us through your prayers and generous giving. We also want to encourage you to stay tuned to hear Pastor Hagee's blessing. Hagee Ministries continues to proclaim the truth of God's word around the globe. Together, we are providing humanitarian aid across Israel, community service initiatives at home and abroad, and transforming the lives of young mothers at the Sanctuary of Hope. Your partnership today ensures we reach the generations of tomorrow through many of today's social media platforms and live web streaming. Become a legacy partner today. Call the number on your screen or go to jhm.org partner. Cornerstone Church invites you to Come Alive 2023, a weekend that will change your life forever. Featuring Lyle Wells, president of Integris Leadership, comedian Michael Jr., and worship with B.J. Putnam, hosted by Pastor John and Matt Hagee. This is an event you won't want to miss, so mark your calendars April 28th to the 30th at Cornerstone Church. For more information, call the number on your screen or visit jhm.org slash comealive. You've been watching Hagee Ministries. And now, your blessing with Pastor John Hagee. And now may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. And may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you, giving you his peace. May you, as torches of truth, as the light bearers to this generation, be filled with hope filled with confidence because the future belongs to the bride of Christ. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered and let the church triumphant prevail, having the best of things in the worst of times. May you serve our Lord and Savior with all of your heart, soul, mind, and body so that when the rapture takes place, you are part of the raptured bride of Christ that will see the Lord in all of his glory. Receive this blessing in Jesus' name, amen.